When thinking about the 2020 draft, the first player that comes to mind as far as one of those players that most teams wishes they could take back in a redraft is Tyrese Halliburton, who ended up falling all the way to 12th in the draft when selected by the Sacramento Kings. Drafted ahead of guys like James Wiseman, Patrick Williams, Isaac Okoro, Killian Hayes, Denny Avdia, among others. A player who already, in just his fourth season in the NBA, has blossomed into a superstar. And in any redraft of this class, you would most certainly have Halliburton going top three, and you could even argue him going first overall. But one player who isn't talked about as much, but absolutely deserves recognition for his ascendance from that draft class, who was selected even further back in the first round, is Tyrese Maxey, who ended up going 21st overall to the Philadelphia 76ers, a player who was a top 10 recruit coming out of high school in 2019, a solid season at Kentucky in his freshman year, for some reason fell all the way to 21 to a team that was already one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, and has quickly risen to being the Sixers' second best player in just his short time period in the NBA and continuing to get better in what seems like every passing month. And now, with Joel Embiid out for an extended period of time with that meniscus injury, this is an opportunity for Maxi to showcase why he is one of the top players in the NBA. But how did Maxi, a seemingly afterthought in the NBA draft, rise in the manner in which he has, and just how good can this young man be as he enters his prime in the NBA? Of course, as always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, it would mean a great deal to me if you subscribe to help the channel grow. About 80% of you watching are not not subscribe. So again, if you like the content, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Now, when the Sixers learned that Joel Embiid was going to be having a procedure to repair the meniscus in his left knee, which at the time of this recording, we're still awaiting to see what his timeline will be as far as a return. But early reports indicate that this likely will be an absence of at least one to two months and even the possibility of him missing the rest of the season. And while that is crushing news for the Sixers and their fans in and of itself to lose their superstar big man and reigning MVP and front runner to win it again this year, the day that we learned this news Tyrese Maxey said don't worry Sixers I got you and went absolutely off and having one of the best games of his career setting a career high in points going for 51 in total shooting a ridiculous 17 for 27 63 percent from the floor seven for nine from three 77 percent from three on nine attempts and of course shooting 90 percent from the free throw line doing all of this with zero turnovers. Maxi said right there and then, I'm taking this challenge head on. This is my team now until we see the return of Joel Embiid. And regardless of how big of a loss Embiid is, I'm going to hold down the fort and keep this team afloat until we see his return. Now, while some might say Maxi breaking out in the manner he has just a few short seasons is wild for a player that went that late into the first round and had a pretty underwhelming rookie season, this really shouldn't come as much of a shock for a lot of basketball analysts. And is another example of why it takes patience, the right environment, development, and role for a player with potential to truly realize said potential. Like I said, Maxi was a top 10 recruit coming out of high school, went to one of the best basketball programs in the country in Kentucky, and while his freshman season didn't wow scouts per se, it was pretty clear this kid had a lot of potential to be an offensive firepower as he got older. The biggest question mark around Maxi was his outside shooting. At Kentucky, he could barely shoot 30% from three and at the college three point line, and his overall efficiency and finishing at the rim wasn't quite there yet. But what shouldn't have given scouts pause as it relates to his three-point shooting was just how well he shot the ball from the foul line. Generally speaking, not all the time, but generally speaking, players who shoot well from the free throw line above 85% have the ability and potential to improve their overall shot, their release, and effectiveness of their jumper over time within a game. For Tyrese Maxey, it was more so about finding the right shots to take, learning how to create separation from his defender, and getting a quicker release. Finding that three-point shot would change everything for Maxi because he had all the ball handling ability, he had the speed and quickness to get to the basket, the strength and agility to draw contact to get to the foul line. The biggest thing for him as a shooting guard was developing that shot consistently. And luckily for Maxi, the Sixers with the proper focus and development and recognizing the need to prioritize Maxi as their next franchise cornerstone and offensive weapon, they continuously worked with him, investing in shooting coaches to work with him, giving him run in minutes despite being a team that already had win now level talent. The Sixers saw something in this kid and they put their focus on him. Maxi went from his rookie season where he shot just 30% from three on 1.7 attempts per game and 46% overall with a true shooting percentage of 53% to the following season where he not only upped his volume significantly from seven attempts per game to 13, but improving his three-point shooting to 42% 
on a little over four attempts per game and a true shooting percentage just under 60%. To them, in his third season, suddenly becoming one of the best outside shooters in the game of basketball, shooting a ridiculous 43.4% from deep on over six attempts per game. Some of the highest efficiency in the league on that volume and usage going from averaging just eight points per game in his rookie season to now over 20 points per game. But this season, in his fourth year, is where Maxi has now taken his game to the next level because while his overall efficiency has dipped a bit, now shooting 38% from three and 45% from the field overall, he's become one of the Sixers' primary scorers with a drastic increase in overall shooting volume. But for Maxi, more importantly than just his pure scoring, which he's putting up career highs and at over 26 points per game, it's his ability to generate offense by way of his improved playmaking and court vision as the team's point guard, averaging over 6.4 assists per game, but keeping his turnover percentage down despite his higher usage and moving the ball around more than he ever has in the past. The lowest turnover percentage of his career, one of the top turnover percentages in the league despite having some of the highest usage in the NBA, top five in the league in turnover percentage while also maintaining his efficiency on offense and scoring the ball. But the biggest change in Maxi from this year to last year is his confidence and decision making when he's on the court. For a 23-year-old player, he plays with a level of veteran savviness and awareness on the court we didn't see much of last season. Maxi feels comfortable in taking over games, and the Sixers are confident in his ability to close out games because of his high basketball IQ, poise, and confidence, something that wasn't always the case last season, mainly because Embiid was that go-to guy, but this season, Maxi hasn't shied away from being that top dog on the floor, and it's been very rare to see him falter and crumble in big moments this year. That's the true sign of a star and superstar in the making, because some guys in the league can easily get you 25 to 30 a night. But when it comes to closing out games, willing your team to win despite being shorthanded, and in this case, being without your superstar and top three player in the league, when it comes to having that it factor, showing that you is him on a consistent basis and not crumbling under pressure, and that's what gives me great hope and promise in Tyrese Maxey for the future in being one of the next bright young stars in the league and a building block for the Sixers even beyond Joel Embiid, who is about to turn 30 years old. Tyrese Maxey is only 23. Dude hasn't even entered his prime yet. He's almost a whole year younger than Tyrese Halliburton, and seeing this level of play, improvement, and confidence being displayed year over year is why we're seeing the makings of the next star in the NBA. Tyrese Maxey is all but a shoe-in for winning the Most Improved Player of the Year award, right? Like, pains me to say it because I want to see Kobe White win it, but with the way Maxi is playing and obviously is going to have an even bigger role with Embiid now out of the lineup, he's most likely going to be the candidate to win the award. Let me know what you guys think, though. Do you think Maxi is taking home the Most Improved Player of the Year award? And where do you see Maxi's ceiling for his career? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.